at all things real estate on DXB today. We're trying to sort of furnish you with the information that you need to make the right decisions. And one thing you've really got to be on top of are A, your rights uh, as a property owner, uh, be a property buyer and otherwise. And again, we go back to the point we made a little bit earlier on, that things there have evolved. Time now to take some legal advice on the situation. Partner at BLK Legal is, of course, Scott Hutton, who's alongside us. Evening to you. Good evening, thank you for having me. Not at all, great to have you on board. It's a busy, busy old time. I mean, I say it's a busy time of year. When's it not, when was the last time it wasn't busy for uh, anyone in your profession? Well, uh, that's a very good point. Um, as James was saying, you know, a market going like that or going like that is good for business. Yeah. <laughs> right? you know, just going like that is particularly good for lawyers. Um, but yeah, you're right, I mean, it's been rammed. I came over here 2008. Um, so saw what was then a bubble, yep. we saw it burst, we saw the crash, saw all the changes, disputes lawyers were rammed, but now we're, you know, we're well out the other side, right? And things are, are flying. So front end work, the development is back on massively. Um, we talked about the, the pricing going through the roof. But one of the things I hear a lot is bubble, bubble or no bubble. Yep. Um, and it's changed so much in the last, 15 years. I think 2008 was a bubble because mm. there were no significant metrics to base valuations on. Whereas now, look at the roads. Um, this place is hugely populated. It's a popular place to be. Genuine metrics driving prices. Mm. So I think things, I hope it's not sustainable yeah. um, as is, but we've got a system now that is sustainable yeah. and a legal system and a set of rules in place to protect people. And that's the difference. So 2008, when you first experienced the market to where we are in 2023, that system has changed, it's evolved. It has massively evolved and the, the rules were still there. You know, when I arrived in 2008, everyone was a broker. None of them were regulated. The rules were there, but they weren't enforced. Mm. Um, and now it's changed a lot. We're seeing the rules being enforced, the escrow account rules, yeah. really protecting purchasers now. Whereas we saw projects cancelled 2010, 11, 12. Money just wasn't there, it had been spent. Not supposed to be, the laws were there, but they weren't being enforced. Yeah. Whereas now, you're know, super strict on these things. So genuine protections for buyers. Yeah. So we're talking a lot about buying, but like, what about in terms of like renters? You know, do you, are you finding now like rental disputes are on a rise? <laughs> Not half. Um, You're asking for a friend or? <laughs> yeah. Always yeah, arguing with my landlord. <laughs> um, I was in the RDC, the Rent Dispute Centre yesterday, sitting down with one of the judges. There are now 24 full-time judges no, in the RDC not. just dealing with rental disputes. It's ridiculous. Um, and an awful lot of them shouldn't be there yeah. Yeah. because the, the rules are pretty straightforward and pretty clear. And a lot of those cases should just be settled immediately. Someone sitting down with them saying, like, here's what the rules say. Yeah. Um, so just be sensible. And I'm involved with the, the land department's courses um, for teaching brokers. And one of the things I talk about with the law is this code of ethics, which I'm bound by a code of ethics, which you take very seriously. And it essentially just says, be a reasonable person. Mm. And it's not setting a massively high bar, it's just be reasonable. Mm. And that's what we're looking at through the RDC. So many cases getting there because I understand that a landlord can double his rent. You know, yeah. That's attractive. Yeah. But it's not allowed yeah. for good reason. <laughs> you know, rent controls in place, and that's, that's all these are. It's rent controls, and they're not unreasonable. Yeah. Is that something you take into consideration, James, when you're um, <laughs> teaching and you're real estate agents just the laws in general yeah yeah of course i mean we run them through what they need to know to be able to you know give counsel and give advice to a client um so yeah i mean we, got, we run through obviously you know the basics of the laws and especially how that relates to them you know interacting with a landlord for example who wants their tenant out for them to pay more interacting with a tenant who doesn't want to leave and what their rights are and how to go about disputing that um, so yeah, I mean, that was one of my questions for you. I wanted to hear a little bit more about uh, what that training is. I see you on LinkedIn. I know that you're out there training agents. Uh, like, what do you focus on exactly with them? How, how in depth do you go with agents when you train them? We don't go into a great deal of depth. You get one day on the law. It's a four day course of one day on law. Um, and it's a half day at that. Nine to one, I'm going to teach them the legal system. 
Come on, I, I spent seven years <laughs> learning this. Yeah, you don't want to give them the tricks of the trade, you know, <laughs> before, before lunch, do you, yeah. eh? <laughs> um, but we touch on the key points. I'm not there to tell them what the process is, because you'll do that far better than I will. Mm. Um, but things we need to be clear about on escrow account rules, um, what developers have to do and what developers should be committing to and what agents should be looking for. Mm. And if I had, because we talked about having disputes and having issues with uh, landlords, uh, someone coming to BLK Liga, what should they expect? What are the services that you guys would give out? Um, well, we're a full service Someone offer. who doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. um, and without plugging us too much, um, it's a full service regional law firm. On the real estate side, I'm, I'm the head of our construction department, which covers real estate and construction. So we do front end construction, development work, property purchases, sales, um, leasing work, and then we do the dispute side as well. But on the, the real estate side for property purchases, and James will tell you better than me, I'd be interested to know the sort of percentage of buyers you think take legal advice, mm. which I find pretty staggering. Is they come to me when something goes wrong. Well, okay, well, this just isn't fair. But you agreed that in your contract. No, I didn't. You did, it's written in there. Well, I didn't read it. <laughs> okay, whose fault is that? Yeah. You know, so, yeah. so if there's anything to take from from my advice, it's read your contracts, people. True. Yeah, um, legal advice is not just for the end of the contract, it's from the contract from the off, yeah? Correct, and I'm not suggesting, I'm not pitching for business here and saying you need to go and speak to a lawyer. But if you were, you could just stare straight down the camera. Yeah, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah VLK legal. <laughs> um, but read your contracts, yeah. understand the risk. A contract is just an allocation of risk. What is your risk appetite? What is mine? And are we comfortable with where it sits in this contract? Yeah, true. And as a buyer, particularly an off-plan, it's good to be heavily weighted on one side. Yeah. Which is okay as long as you know that from the start. You know, if I understand what my position is, then I can prepare for it, I can deal with it. But... Now I understand why they make contracts 160 pages long. <laughs> yeah. You just go, like, small agree, just font sign as well. on all the papers that are reading. <laughs> yeah, there's just one line that matters, isn't it? <laughs> well, thank you very much. Secrets away. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Scott, for joining us today in the show. <laughs> Today's Spotlight is on an ambitious interior design company here to find an intersection between practicality and creativity. The one-stop shop from conception to construction. This is Ronak Shah from Wonderwall Interior. Hi, my name is Ronak Shah. I represent Wonderwall Interiors and Contracting. Uh, we convert your dream home, your dream restaurant, your dream retail unit into reality. We design, we build, we execute, and we manage it up to the delivery. Finding all of these services under one roof is extremely difficult. And uh, as, uh, as a family or as an individual trying to convert a unit uh, into reality um, and, and following up with multiple parties is, is one of the challenges that most of our clients face, which we're very, very happily taking away off their shoulders. The biggest challenge about our business is also one of the most beautiful things. It's um, um, the kind of people we work with are mostly doing this once or twice in their lifetime. We're probably working with a family, building their dream home or we're working with a chef who's put his or her life savings into, into building that restaurant and building that business. So uh, across the board, all of our clients are running really high on emotions. So that's, that's something that's challenging to deal with, but that's the beauty of, of what we do. We work with people, we work with families, we work uh, with emotions. Um, one of the things that we've been working on quite seriously for the last two years uh, and is part of our long-term vision is to have a uh, minimal or zero environmental impact. Um, we've started getting into usage of technologies that uh, can power homes and have self-sustaining homes. So we've done partially solar-powered homes, we've done completely solar-powered homes. Uh, we're also working with authorities to understand how we can reduce uh, the impact on the existing utilities because uh, the, a major part of this country has been built uh, a good 12, 15 years ago and there are communities that are as old as 20 years old um, and to, uh, to, to, be pres to have presence in those communities and try and reduce um, uh, the, the existing load on the utilities is something that we're working very seriously and it's, it's not something that can be achieved quite quickly so it's a process. 
There's many, but uh, the one that I'm most excited about and the one that directly impacts our business is is Palm Jabal Ali. Uh, we've done a few amazing, amazing dream homes in in Palm Jumeirah, and we're looking to replicate or do better in Palm Jabal Ali. So we're really looking forward to when the infrastructure is done and we're ready to hit the ground running. It's now time for the roundup. Ahmed, what do you have for us today? On today's daily roundup, the UAE's gaming island attracts real estate investors looking for thriving opportunities. Al Murjan Island is preparing to host the biggest gaming club in the world, the forthcoming Win Al Murjan Island. This multi billion dollar property promises to be a magnet for wealth and tourism, creating jobs and providing a substantial boost to the Emirates economy. So, what do we think about this? Well, I think it's obviously a great opportunity to create more jobs, more tourism, yeah. uh, and it's refreshing for something so big to be happening also in one of the other Emirates. Cause, exactly, you know, yeah, it's going to attract a lot of tourism and a lot of yeah. new people, investors are going to come in. Yeah to build all these hotels that they're going to have on the Murjan Island. Definitely, because it's going to have a knock-on effect, isn't it? It's, you know, obviously the Wynn Hotel is going yeah. to be coming now, but I mean, afterwards, other big international hotels are going to want to have a presence there exactly. on the gaming island. Yeah, <laughs> 100%. Yeah, I mean, we talk a lot about uh, just in general, anything that happens in the region, in the Middle East, it's good. Anything on the peninsula that happens, it's good. And then internally in the country, that's good. So yeah, like you said, anything in any emirate is going to drive business to the UAE. And, and we think it's great. Um, I'm excited by this. I'm very excited about this. Yeah. I think it's I think it's a little bit of a game changer for the hospitality industry. I think it's a big game changer for the tourism industry. Kudos to Russell Kema yes. and all the team uh, up in Rectida for what they're doing up there for, 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 for taking what is a bold decision. And mm. I think a lot of the other Emirates, I think a lot of the region will look on with interest to see what happens here as well. It's definitely generated a buzz around the world. Yes. There's a lot of anticipation. We're, what, months away from the first sort of uh, entities being opened up as well. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I think it could be. And that's what we need, isn't it? I mean, we, we're talking about it from a property side of things, but also from a hospitality side of things. You want variety. Yeah, you want the outdoor activities. You want different um, environments, etc. And to add that into the mix is just going to add a whole new thing. And I would go as far to suggest, I reckon, that property prices will go up in Ras al-Khaimah as well. Oh, they have already. I are mean, they? It's, yeah, it's shot up. Uh, you know, big, all the developers, not all of them, but big developers are already going up there, launching uh, big you know, off-plan projects to match this release in the area. And prices are you know, way higher than they were before, than they would have been without this project. So yeah, it's driving a lot of business up there. Even when it was still just speculation, it was driving business. So yeah, it's, it's a, a massive deal. And if it works well, which I think it will, I think it'll become a, 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 a success you know, a, a successful item to then replicate, hopefully, throughout the country. There goes my retirement plans. Oh, you know, sorry. I thought that was going to be the best kept secret known to mankind. <laughs> little place up in Ras Al Khaimah on the beach, etc. It. Blown it now, haven't we? Eh? Yeah, That's yeah, for yeah. sure. You've got five other Emirates you can still check. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Give it a shot. Exactly. In fact, talking of retirement, we are going to be finding out a few more uh, ideas about retirement uh, options around the world a little later on. Let's see what is coming up in the remainder of the show. We catch up with Khalid at the Progressive Property Network to find out how to network in the real estate landscape with the experts. Also, we meet the founder of Wildcrest Parks, the number one park home operator in the UK. White discussing the top strategies in the world of real estate, finding out what he's doing here in the UAE. Plus, we've got a group of performers waiting to perform their magic, so please do stay with us. <laughs> 